Hello, everybody. My name is Caleb Vanenacher, and welcome to Squirrel, the comedy podcast. The show where I get together with my friends and their friends and maybe even their friends' friends, and we have a ball of a time talking about random topics. Shower thoughts that will only lead down the most deep rabbit holes. But in this episode, we're getting serious. We're going to be answering our toughest question this planet has ever had to answer, and is yet to confidently answer single-handedly, and we're about to do it right now on this podcast. We're answering the question, what is the matter with airplane food? Do you know? I bet you don't. There's way more to it than you'd think. I never imagined what answer I would get out of this. So, I guess I'll send you to the interviews. Episode 2. It's the Great Air Food Debate. So, I'm going to need multiple different people, I think, to get down to the bottom of this. I might as well uh, let you know that I got um, a, a person already interviewed. Um, and they were very, very helpful. A professional American citizen, through and through. Uh, but I'm going to now bring in my good friend and connoisseur in the arts of food, Victoria Chambers. Come on in, Victoria. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, but I also brought with me a special guest of my own. Oh, oh, we have another person here? We have another person. Oh, He's hello. an expert on hello. airplanes and all things that fly in the air, including um, birds. That man you heard, that is Peyton. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the issue went far beyond food. It was the food that ended up getting transported in the air. That was the issue, dear listeners, and he would prove useful in my quest for answers. Oh, Victoria, how in the world are people supposed to just magically get food onto a plane and make it so miserable. Are there kitchens? Do you know anything about the layout of planes and how food is supposed to be stored? Uh, I know how food is supposed to be stored. I highly doubt that they have actual food. Uh, Food is one of the technical terms we in the business use to refer to food storage. It's just easier if you combine them It sounds very, very fancy. It's also a very funny word. I love food. (laughs) Well, yes, she would be correct. We do have a food storage, um, but food. food storage, excuse me. <laughs> yes, so we have our frozen beef and our food, and we always love to freeze our beef because why else would you not freeze it? Are you hearing this, Victoria? They freeze beef. Absolutely, and I truly think it's brutal, but again, in the airline thing, that's probably pretty normal. Now, we're going to just ignore how they contradicted each other and focus on the fascinating investigation that I did with Abbey Rhodes because we were wondering where all these women are coming from when they bring out our food. Well, that's one thing we'll never know because not once have I ever seen a kitchen on an airplane before, but yet I see these females coming out from the back area and I'm just like, well... What are you guys doing? Just chatting it up like a bunch of Karens back there? And then you served me the worst food in the world. We now had the answer. It was the food. But that was only part of the answer to the mystery. Karens may be bringing out the food, but why was it so upsetting to my bowels after I ate it? Why the exorbitant price? This might help, you know? So... I I know that this is a worldwide issue. Like, everyone's trying to fly in the air. Flying in the air is the best way to get around. As opposed to flying, like... On the ground. (laughs) Right. People are always trying to fly on the ground in America. It just so happens that there are many Americans in this nation. One of them being my good friend, Abby Rhodes. It just so happens that she is excellent at being an American citizen, and she flew on an airline recently. This is what she had to say about her experience. So I went on United Airlines a couple months ago to go visit one of my best friends down in Georgia, and honestly, it was a pretty decent experience. Oh, I have a complaint me. here, though, oh. but go on. they charge you for the food 
And I'm just like, buddy, I hope that's in my ticket. But you know what they gave us? They gave all of us a little tiny bag. That's all they gave us unless we paid more to get a snack pack. Which I was like, hmm, that's probably not going to be 20 bucks out of my wallet total. You know what? America, inflation. Apparently, I paid $306 for two tickets. And I bet there's plenty of taxation on that. It all goes to Uncle Sam. Taxation without representation, guys, am I right? $306? That is insane. That is perfectly reasonable. How so? Okay, well, have you taken the time to factor in the amount of gas you need for an aeroplane to go through the air? That crap is expansive, okay? I know nothing about planes, so please do tell me. It's expensive. $306 expensive? Yes. Okay. Once you get into airplane food, um, as Peyton has kind of already told me, you, you know, everything is so expensive already, so you have to save money where you can. Um, but why? Food. So, first of all, with the baked beans, we have, like, the corn syrup factor. Especially um, if you look at states like Indiana, um, where all they have is corn. So they just sort of sprinkle corn into everything, and I don't know where they're getting their food from, but I think that's a safe assumption to make. Um, would you have described the baked beans as being a crappy thing to eat? I just know from a personal experience. I love baked beans. I love some good brown baked beans. Um, but something was just fishy about these. They weren't like the bushes baked beans, but um, they were they were just like <laughs> you know they were just. Bleh. If if you don't want the tickets to be the same price as the food. I mean, you've got to cut costs. I mean, if they're charging you 300 something for the tickets, they don't want to charge you 300. That's some shady capitalism right there. Oh, absolutely. And I didn't think this story could get much more outlandish. Airlines feeding us subpar food because of mere capitalism. But oh dear listeners, that was only the tip of the iceberg. Why do they need to raise the prices when it's so bad in the first place? Would you like the real answer to that? Yeah. Well, nothing can prepare you for what I'm about to tell you. Oh boy. The airlines run the economy. Go on, please. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled. What, what are you trying to say there, Peyton? So, they always give you the beans. The beans are cooked in spent jet fuel. And that the excrement of said beans is in the toiletries of the airplanes. They go back into the fuel hold where they are reused as fuel for the planes. Yeah, I'd say that pretty much about covers it, honestly. And that just makes the plane go. And therefore, it, it just is. It just is. It just is. All right. And my waitresses are just coming out and saying, here you go. This is 30 bucks because it is. I can't question it. Um, so where are all these ingredients coming from? The food. Duh. I, I thought they came from like Indiana or something like where the, the corn syrup that's coming from Indiana. Oh, that's yes. Specifically the corn syrup. Um, the rest of the ingredients could literally have come out of anywhere. The, what about the fish? Also the food. Those come out of the ocean. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I have a connoisseur here to <laughs> make corrections. Typically fish come out of the ocean. Um, there is the occasional times where they come out of like a giant glass box. Um, I don't know. I know about food, not animals, but um, what? except for the animals that are the food. But yeah, typically fish come out of the ocean, sometimes a glass box. It really depends on like um, what the geographical location of the place where you're getting your fish from and the kind of fish that you're getting. Um, McDonald's usually gets their fish from glass boxes. McDonald's? Okay, don't even get me started on McDonald's. Except that it was far too late. McDonald's. Okay, you know how McDonald's, they have that weird little guy who's all yellow and red, making his burgers and his nuggets and whatever, but they also run the government. Would you like to know why, my dear friend Caleb? 
I am I'm I'm appalled. Please. <clears throat> you take those two colors and you mix them together. Oh, I went to kindergarten. I know it makes orange. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 I'm so smart. Okay. You're starting to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you take those two colors and we get orange. Who or what is orange? Uh, former... The annoying orange. Mm. Yes, the annoying orange, and also former President Donald J. Trump. Okay, what does the president have to do about this? Well, let me explain. As you can see, in the year 2016, we see an influx of customers at McDonald's. And that means McDonald's is making more money. And you said that the airlines are also running the government. They're running the economy. The uncanny thing was Peyton wasn't the only one who was realizing this. Abby was too. Okay, Abby, I I think there's some beef behind this, this theory of yours. So you're telling me that it is frozen beef in that Ronald, and you, do you agree that this could potentially be coming from Ronald McDonald himself? I mean, unless I saw someone walk up in a clown costume dressed like Ronald McDonald himself, this could be a maybe. But the thing that we do know is that airline food is definitely not fresh. Hey, I think you might have been right. I told you it's all connected. The airlines get the beef from Ronald McDonald himself, who's also in cahoots with the president and the government. It's all connected. They're running the economy. Victoria, wait, wait. Did you know about this? I did not. I was worried about, like, food and beans and fish. So, like, I let him handle the plain stuff and the government. You put the government in this man's hands? Well, no. <laughs> I think he's sort of picked up the government at this point and is tr trying to figure out where to put them down at. I want to move past the beef, though, and get to um, what you were talking about, your baked beans, and um, that they were really awful. Yes, they were They were pretty bad. Okay. And uh, it, it wasn't a good result at the end when it, when it came out, honestly. It... it it was pretty bad. In fact, it was as... Okay, you you know, have you ever been to a good Taco Bell joint? Have you ever ha went, gone to a Taco Bell joint? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. what is the end result? It's nothing pretty. I'm going to have Abby tell us more. If I can press the right button. So do you think it's Taco Bell? Here's, here's the thing I say about Taco Bell. Taco Bell's good, in my opinion, but here's the thing. One wrong move, and you're... To your, your toilet's just say, gonna blow up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. your toilet's dead. My, yeah, you're gonna have a massive explosion. So I had to ask the tough question. There's jet fuel in those beans, and Ronald McDonald and Donald J. Jump are running this show. How is this healthy? How am I not dead? I mean, when you really think about it, when every time you do something that's like technically good for you, it's usually not a very fun experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like that just makes a lot of sense then. It was actually all decently good for you, and that's why but it tastes bad. But it's just bad. Uh, okay, so while it can taste bad, it can actually be super healthy for you, is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. like, you know how kids usually don't like uh, broccoli? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But broccoli's like one of the most healthy vegetables, so. Even he knows this, Victoria. Exactly. It's yeah. just commonly understood, yeah. It is. What do you mean even I know this? So I heard from a source who I will not name. My mom. Uh, I have heard that jet fuel does boost your immune system. So it's just the side effects of, oh, it's just the side effects of me consuming the beans. Yeah. That the, the plain toilet kind of, yeah, ended up the way it did. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. You're not the foodie guy, I thought, but you know, yeah, you, you know, you, you know stuff. You know stuff. There's a lot of things. No. I Except that Peyton does know a lot of things, as quite evident by his incredible revelation he's about to share next. I just had a stunning revelation. <laughs> but go on. What are the main ingredients when you put together a hamburger? You have hamburger meat. It comes from a cow. Uh, we're just gonna like set the basis here. Ah. It comes from a cow. Comes Which lives cow. in the ocean. Which lives in the ocean. And then we have the lettuce. The cheese. Which comes out of the sky. Yes. What cheese are you getting out of the sky, please? From the sky cows. Uh, what? Okay, 
I will go back to where I started. Cheese, the lettuce, even maybe some tomato in there. What do we think about a taco? What else do we have in there? Hamburger meat, lettuce, tomato possibly. I have made a stunning revelation. Burgers are tacos. This, this, this can only mean that Taco Bell is in cahoots with McDonald's and the government. Yeah, um, when I finally correlated all my evidence, trying to see if this was a flopped theory thus far, I'll be honest, I struggled. I struggled. And the following audio clip from Abbey Rhodes didn't make my job any easier. In fact, it had so much evidence, it made it near impossible to disprove. Have a listen for yourself. When has there ever been a time where I've seen a Taco Bell mascot? What, so someone's just gonna walk out randomly and shake, shake, shake in a bell costume? Yeah, and they're gonna start ringing their bells, yeah. Then you'll get a very white Christmas. And that's coming to town with his bells. And he's going to be delivering it straight to Spira Airlines that are being exploded. That's why they're being delayed. The airline companies are being delayed because their toilets are being exploded. Yeah, Santa comes in with his ho 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 jelly belly, and all of a sudden he's just like, hey man, can I have 2,000 tacos? It's like, bro, no wonder our plumbing sucks. You're blowing up all the bathrooms, and this is the reason why coming airlines together. are always being delayed. Like, come on, dude. It's all coming together. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think they charge so much for airlines? They're paying Taco Bell for the beans that they put in the jet fuel that fuels the planes. And then they just store it in the fooge. Yes, they yes. store it in the fooge. Yes. Santa has given um, us food people a lot of problems because as soon as the holidays roll around, it's nothing but milk and cookies. Like the amount of sugar and dairy products that people consume over Christmas is just insane. I mean, if there was a celebrity that was in cahoots with all of this, I, yeah, Santa's a fair guess. Despite Santa's run on the cookie and milk industry, he might be the most intelligent businessman there is. Taco Bell, McDonald's, Ronald McDonald, and at this point, what other fast food idols could we possibly rope in? Because you would think that Taco Bell and McDonald's, they all would be competing, but no! Instead, they've shaken hands. And with Santa too. I mean, but we Take a listen. Donald, how could they both? I thought they were like competing. That's just a surface level, you know, thing. They want us to think that they are competing, but that could be further from the truth. They're actually very great buddies. I've actually witnessed Ronald McDonald shaking hands with the Bell himself. And with all of this evidence, all of this evidence that he had on planes and other random facts and. Victoria's absolutely immaculate understanding of how food industry is run and how food is stored in a fooge. All of this allowed us to come to the most safe conclusion between Ronald McDonald, who allegedly, potentially, most likely is the Trump that we know from the 2016 election. He's working with Santa Claus, Taco Bell, and the, and the McDonald franchise. Ronald McDonald is running the country, man. And you know, this could be a good case of McDonaldization, according to the lovely American sociologist George Ritzer, which he refers to the particular kind of rationalization of production, work, and consumption. So as our economy is slowly becoming more technologically advanced, they have to make the frozen stuff instead of fresh because it slows down the production and the supply of airlines. They don't want to take the time to provide you with good food. They just give you good service and they just take your entire wallet with them at the same time. Because we've been through this. They're all in cahoots. They all benefit from this. And it would also make sense that it is so expensive too because they are literally paying the man who has to make toys for the entire world. And that my dearest listeners, was the issue with airline food. I thank you very much for listening to this podcast. This has been Squirrel, episode two. 
It's the great air food debate. All right, podcast out.